Hello and welcome to All Star News Bulletin on Star Television Channel 21. I am Ali Masamura. Force to headlines. As part of the goodwill gesture in appreciating the services rendered to the students of the Prince of Wales School, the Old Prince William Association has on Tuesday, 22nd December 2020, donated cash to staff of the Junior Secondary School and Senior Secondary School at the Prince of Wales School compound in Kingtown. It's a unique opportunity to show our appreciation for this particular profession called teaching profession, where we are actually linking that helps to formulate the kids to be able to take exams, to be a better in society and to teach them also standards they have to utilize. The Director General of the Local Content Agency, Fode Badaba, has said that as a result of a robust monitoring mechanism adopted by the agency, 90% of supermarkets are now complying with dedicating and displaying made in Sierra Leone shelves in prominent areas in their supermarkets. Um, we, are, we are now able to report that almost 90% of our supermarkets now have the dedicated made in Sierra Leone shelf across the western area. And the Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority has on Tuesday 22nd December 2020 commissioned a newly refurbished automobile works at their headquarters office at Kisi Road. The facility, according to the executive director, SLRC Ibrahim Sano, is meant to teach people about auto mechanics. Uh, basically, this uh, stems way back from colonial era. Uh, this place was meant for the repair of government vehicles and all, but uh, that one died out. The dream actually died out. The advocacy consultancy, together with the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, organized a review committee meeting at the Freetown Teachers Training College for tertiary institutions to ensure more standards are placed on teachers. As we all know, we're here because we want to come and add our voice to documents that would speak to the quality of the teachers. Those were the headlines. And now the news in detail. As part of their goodwill gesture in appreciating the services rendered to students of the Prince of Wales School, the Old Prince William Association has on Tuesday 22nd December 2020 donated cash to staff of the Junior Secondary School and Senior Secondary School at the Prince of Wales School at Kingtown. The donation, according to the chairman of Old Prince William Association, Walter Ekunda Yogilpin, is aimed at motivating staff of the school to do more through teaching and learning outcomes for students. He spoke to Star TV in this interview. It's a unique opportunity to show our appreciation for this particular profession called teaching profession, where we are actually linking that helps to formulate the kids to be able to take exams, to be better in society, and to teach them also standards they have to utilize in their life going forward. So we have come together to appreciate the teachers. It's really not the classroom that forms the kid, it is the teachers in the classroom that form the kid. And we know that teachers at times feel that they're left out, they're not really that strongly compensated, they're not really seen as a formidable force, but we know they're formidable force. We know they should be even better compensated. So what we're doing right now is to come and show them, look, we love you, appreciate what you're doing, and we're going to make sure we make you know that you're appreciated by a tangible, tangible delivery of something towards the teachers during this festive season to encourage teachers, that's one initial fundamental way to start addressing the source of it. Secondly, the teachers themselves went through some form of education, which probably for the younger ones was also standard, because what we had and what's been given now has created a big difference between what is and what is expected. As a consequence, we need to start somewhere. So we are going to want to help teachers to express where they have issues. Secondly, to understand what the issues are. Probably see how we can start working with them to be able to correct these issues. I know one could be maybe the facilities they have to they have to work with, their level of sadness with technology, the attitude of the kids, the remuneration, and there's a whole basket of things that can dissuade teachers. But if you have that intrinsic motivation, intrinsic in that you do the job for the love of it and only for the rewards. And if they have intrinsic motivation, they begin to love the job. So the love will be the success that the kids will have. The love will be the outcome that the profession will get. That is going to override the extrinsic motivation. If we can 
must extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to the executive of the Old Prince Williams Association. And I believe it's a good gesture. It means hard work, more work, and I believe I deserve it. That is why I was nominated unanimously by the entire staff of the Prince of Wales Junior Secondary School. And I'll continue to do my best to ensure that Prince of Wales will be right up there. Thank you so very much and for pleasure talking to you. You're welcome. Thank you. The Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority is on Tuesday, 22nd December. 2020 commissioned the newly refurbished automobile works at the headquarters office at Kisi Road. The facility, according to the executive director, SLRSA Ibrahim Salo, is meant to teach people about auto mechanics. George Elliott Sam reports. The Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority, SLRSA, as on Tuesday, 22nd December 2020, showcased their newly refurbished automobile workshed at their headquarters office at Kisi Road in Freetown, where they will be training people on technical issues about auto mechanic and automobile. While speaking, the Executive Director, Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority, SLRSA, Ibrahim Sano, said the workshed has been in existence since the colonial era, but has also been out of use for over a decade now. When he took over the administration of the SLRSA, he thought it fit that they need to refurbish the automobile workshop and also to open a school where they will be training people on technical issues about automobile and auto mechanic. Uh, basically, this uh, stems way back from the colonial era. Uh, this place was meant for the repair of government vehicles and all. But uh, that one died out, the dream actually died out. So when I took over as executive director of the files, and I realized that indeed this edifice was meant for maintenance and training. Maintenance of people and training also for the uh, automobile workers. And there used to be uh, an automobile school here that attracted even university uh, students to come for internship, to come for job and to job training. Well, like those who have been mechanical, electrical, automobile, uh, as well. In Sierra Leone, as well, we do have an, an automobile school. So I conceived the idea and tried, uh, took it to some level and see how much we can expand on it. And today, to the glory of God, we are set because we had a partnership with the uh, APF Auto Spares, a Belgian automobile uh, company or a Belgian automobile. Uh, so we partnered with them, they came to refurbish the edifice. We also tried to put some uh, something into whatever they were doing. And today we have this edifice refurbished with a proper stock of spares, with a spring cabin room, and even the school is out there. So the whole idea basically is, is uh, part of safety we have found out has to do with also the wear and tear of the vehicle. And so in trying to leverage that particular aspect, that's why we have allocated this one. Uh, so the school is over there, and this is the spares, the, the, the buffer stock of spares area. They are also bringing their expertise, technological expertise, technical expertise. We will also establish a partnership with uh, one or two of the automobile schools in Belgium. Just that they are in French, and we are also trying to see how best we can um, train our own tutors, because the training of trainers. So we can send our own tutors in Belgium, they can send their own tutors here, they can be trained, they can be better equipped with ideas and skills for automobile. For example, if you want to do, let's say, if you want to specialize on undercarrier uh, aspect of automobile, you have to be trained just for undercarrier. We have to we have, to have people, yes, uh, with, with uh, specialized skills. In Sierra Leone, for example, if you go now with your vehicle, most of the vehicles that are repaired are, are mere guesswork. Oh, this one is not working, this one is not working, let's see, let's see. Even the spares, if you go and check the spares on the street sold by most of these Nigerians, they are not high qualitative spares. Our, 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 um, uh, how, how do they call it? Standards Bureau also, they have a role to play in, uh, in all of this. So we want to really see how we can bring uh, an, an, uh, an, an innovation to this entire thing. So that's why we develop this. And by the end of January, we start operating full. The irony basically is, we give, we examine government vehicles to be repaired. <laughs> and then we give certification to them when they are repaired. To say, okay, yes, you brought this vehicle for examination, this vehicle had ABC issues. Now you have completed, uh, we, have, we certify that this vehicle has been properly repaired. We don't even have the means to validate those, uh, that, that particular aspect. So going forward, we have a whole diagnostic center. 
A father stated that, according to research they have done over a period of time, showed them that many people are not using the right spare part, that is ranging from oil, filter, battery, tires, and so many more. Basically, to some extent, I'll say that. Because they repair these vehicles without no prior or proper uh, diagno uh, diagnosis on the vehicles. It's like when you're sick, you go to the hospital, and the doctor just says, oh, you're sick, and then the doctor touches your body. Then you feel the warmth of your body, and that's it. And there's prescribed medicines, they go by and don't go by this. But have you done any blood tests? Have you done urine tests? Have you done uh, the other tests required? So it's the same thing. This is why you see uh, these vehicles are repaired and within the, within the twinkle of an eye, you see them again having a breakdown from the roads. So we want to avoid all of this. We want to also see how people can have value for money. This has resulted in a whole lot of road crashes and by extension fatalities. Because from just a random, how do we actually conceive this idea? We did a random survey, not, not robust, though, and we found out that most of the vehicles who are, are having a crash along this uh, free town Maisiaka Highway were as a result of one, leakage of oil, two, the brake pads not working, three, and a host of other uh, things. But primarily it has to do with the wear and tear, the maintenance of the vehicle. Either they are not, the vehicles are not, uh, are not uh, maintenance of the proper spare parts, or, 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 or there are also some malfunctioning in terms of the fixing of the spare parts. The Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority is a body that is responsible to regulate laws of the road. For Star News in Freetown, I am George Elliot Sam reporting. The Director General of the Local Content Agency, Fodiba Daba, has said that as a result of a robust monitoring mechanism adopted by the agency, 90% of supermarkets are now complying with dedicating and displaying made in Sierra Leone products in prominent parts in their supermarkets. He made this disclosure during the agency's end-of-year status update of their activities with the fourth estate, compiled by Alfie Barry, read in the studios by Admire Samai. When engaging the media on the activities, the Director General of the Local Content Agency for the Bad Double reflected an optimistic outlook of the agency, noting that the year 2020 has been a year in which the agency has made a tremendous strive in terms of creating market linkage for local entrepreneurs with multinational companies adding that this is only possible as a result of openness and trust in the agency. He added that there has been an increase in local businesses registering with the agency moving from 95 to over 280. Achievements in 2020 for the local content agency. Um, I'm pleased to report that um, because of this agency's um, key um, priority and strategic pillar within our supply and development market. Um, we, are, we are now able to report that almost 90% of our supermarkets now have the dedicated made in Sierra Leone shelf across the western area and of which 70% of the local entrepreneurs reported to us increased sales in 2020 as a direct benefit because this agency have been able to create that platform for them, not only for them to produce their uh, products, but to be able to have the space you know, for them to sell their products. So for us, the market linkage, the market opportunity that we have created for our local entrepreneurs um, is second to none. Um, in terms of businesses registration, because what we are trying to do, as you know, um, local content, our vision here is clear to the point. We want to make sure we put um, uh, uh, this economy in the hands of Sierra Unions by ensuring that Sierra Union and Sierra Union businesses take leadership and ownership of this economy and not so much foreigners, and for which we owe no one an apology in um, actualizing that. So. Um, the number of businesses registered with this agency increased from 95 businesses in 2019 to 245 businesses in 2020, um, for which uh, I think um, it's a remarkable achievement of which like almost 158% increment. Um, that is huge for obvious reasons because um, now than ever before, Sierra Union business people are now becoming, I mean, 
with the, they are now with the realization that we can come to local content, register our business, and they can link us to opportunities. So that's increased by 158%. Plans for 2021, Director Dabo stated that they intend to initiate Made in Sierra Leone product mapping, which he believes will put our product in good position in terms of competitiveness. Furthering that, they intend to build strategic partnership with key stakeholders with strong communication outreach and also developing regulation and expanding our local markets. Um, we, we, we've also initiated what we call they made in Sierra Leone product mapping using what we call some sort of like a survey. This is very, very much important. It's, it's, it's still ongoing because, you know, as you are aware of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement that has been signed and now is effective next month, you know, it's coming into full force. So the question we should be asking ourselves as a country, you know, are we ready? How ready are we? To, to enhance trade facilitation as, as, as soon as that um, trade uh, agreement kicks in. So what we've been doing is to do product mapping. We, we want to know what kind of products in terms of competitive advantage that we have here as a country that can compete with products in Nigeria, products in Kenya, Namibia, to name but a few. So local content have decided that we're not going to leave this in the hands of anybody, but through our Made in Sierra Leone strategy to take the lead in product mapping. That way we will be able to clearly know whether um, our, our competitive advantage is in uh, 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 palm oil, is in uh, 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 our Beni, is in our Kenya, local products, you know, just so that when that time is here, for that African continental free trade uh, uh, programs in country, we'll be able to say, okay, no, um, Nigeria should not bring cassava in country here because we already have that as one of our, you know, competitive advantage in terms of our products. But you will not get that data if you don't do product mapping. So we thought it fit that um, local content um, should take a lead on that as well. The news compiled by Alfie Bayi, read by Isabella Stanley. The media advocacy consultancy together with the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education organized a review committee meeting at the Freetown Teachers Training College for tertiary institutions to ensure more standards are placed on teachers. Here's the report. Mrs. Siefa Suluku, Director of Research Planning and Development at the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education said, as a country, we have mandated that education should be done in a very good manner. She further that there is no country that can go higher than its quality of teachers. On behalf of my minister, my deputy minister, my professional head, administrative head, and all the other staff of the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education. We just want to welcome you all here today. As we all know, we are here because we want to come and add our voice to documents that would speak to the quality of the teachers that our institutions will be producing. As a country, we've been mandated that education should be done in a very good manner, whereby leading to a quality education that has its spin-off on human capital development in this country. And like my boss said yesterday in McKinney, there's no country that can grow higher than the quality of its teachers. So that's why we're here today. Um, I hope we are all going to be very critical because we've been in Bo, we've been in McKinney, and now today is the final round here. And I've seen the zeal with which all the participants looked at the documents that were brought before them. I'm expecting the same here today from all of my colleagues around the table. And I know that the fact that we are all here today shows our commitment to what we're going to be doing. Dr. Abubakar, lecturer at Fuabe College, Division of Educational Studies, reiterated on the purpose of the gathering, which he said the consultation and validation of the documents, which is distance education policy as well as teachers' education policy, has been documented. We have a responsibility not only as the review committee, 
but also to bring other stakeholders so that we can come here this morning or today to consult, um, to, for consultation as well as validation of very important documents, which are the, the distance education policy as well as teacher education policy. So we want your own input, we want your own contribution because we cannot do this all by ourselves. So we hope you all will contribute seriously and uh, take the time and all the efforts so that we can develop very good policy for our education. Hassan Fouad Kanu, Executive Director Ia Khan, lamented that the long-awaiting call since 2018 for policy on distance education is almost achieved. Insights. I believe um, the long-awaiting call since 2018 for a policy on distance education um, is almost, it's almost achieved. Not because we are having this meeting today, but I have been following the progress um, from the provinces which you have gone around. Um, the area of giving access to people who are in long distance to get education at their, at their convenience is also very, very important, and that will also reduce the population in the metropolitan city, which will, which will um, encourage young people like us in the rural areas to be able to get the education that we need, you know, at a very convenient position. Um, we, we also believe that um, as a member of the Education for All Coalition, that the quality of teacher that we have also impacts on the quality of development we have in the near future. And um, as we take this process along to have these two policy I want to, on behalf of the civil society, um, thank the Ministry of Higher, of Higher Education to say that we support this particular process and we will also ensure that after this policy will have been ratified and, and adopted, we, we, we as a society will also follow very, very strongly to see that the Ministry of Education implement this policy to the letter. Reporting for Star TV, I am Yero Jalo. Well, that's all we have time for in our Time News Bulletin today. Many thanks for watching. I am Alima Samura saying bye-bye.